We live in a throwaway society, and the world generates billions of tons of rubbish each year, and a lot of it will end up in a landfill site. A specially prepared dumping ground for the stuff we do not want anymore. They are not the nicest of places, they smell, produce toxins, and cause serious problems for the environment, but are a necessary evil for the waste we just do not know what to do with. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some shocking real-life stories involving rubbish dumps and landfills. This one's about to get gross, so hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Now before we get started, we'd just like to share something with you. We recently crafted a creepy content newsletter, which is the perfect source for all things spooky. It's carefully curated each day for our audience. Whether you're a returning viewer, or here for the first time, we're very excited to share it with you now, as we've been spending a lot of time making it an essential piece of daily reading. Welcome to the Midnight Express. The Midnight Express is your ticket to the supernatural, the eerie, and the downright creepy. Every single day, our newsletter will deliver a chilling story to your inbox, guaranteed to send shivers down your spine and keep you awake at night. Join us on a spine-tingling journey deep into the heart of the unknown, unearthing secrets that have been buried for centuries, mysteries that defy explanation, and legends that refuse to die. But remember, once you step aboard, there's no turning back. You'll be hooked on the fear, the intrigue, and the unexplained. Always craving more. So are you ready to embrace the darkness, to dive headfirst into the abyss of the unknown? If so, subscribe today and join us on the Midnight Express. But remember, once you're on board, you cannot escape from the eerie, enigmatic, and truly terrifying stories that you will read about every day, all aboard the Midnight Express. Human Legs Found In 2016, waste management workers at a landfill site in Newcastle, Australia, got the shock of their lives when they discovered two human legs protruding from a rubbish pile. Police were called to the scene and the decomposing limbs were removed for investigation. It was later revealed that the legs, one left and one right, had been removed during legitimate surgeries. Also found at the dump were vials of blood and biohazard bags. It became clear that the find was surgical waste. In most countries, clinical waste from hospitals should be correctly labelled and stored in secure containers and disposed of in a safe and secure manner, usually by incineration. So how did these amputated legs end up exposed at a landfill? And the question is, are there flaws in the disposal of clinical waste that could allow infectious material, body parts and internal organs removed during surgical procedures out into the community? That is a pretty frightening prospect. Those legs belong to somebody and it's very disrespectful that they ended up dumped in such a manner. Further investigations on the legs revealed that they were from two different people and horrifyingly it seems this is not an isolated case. In 2015, police in Miami were alerted to a man's severed leg at a rubbish tip. The decomposing right leg had a name attached to it, leading police to call at the man's address. When they knocked the door, they were shocked that the former owner of the leg answered the door and explained that he had his leg amputated below the knee the month before it was discovered. But instead of it being disposed of in the correct way, it ended up at a landfill site. After finding out what happened to his body part, the man sued the hospital for emotional distress, claiming the hospital's action was outrageous and beyond all bounds of human decency and utterly intolerable in civilized society. It does pose the question of how often this has happened before but gone undetected. A pretty horrifying thought, don't you think? Oconto County Doe. On August 24th, 1979, a landfill worker in Lena, Wisconsin, made a horrifying discovery. Inside a discarded metal bread box was a human skull. An initial examination of the skull determined that it was a female 
who had died in around 1969 and had suffered a head injury, likely caused by being beaten. The age of the deceased was estimated to be between 30 and 40 years. The bread box had been dumped at the landfill on August 18th, but authorities were unable to identify who left it. Several appeals were made to try and identify the victim, and missing persons in the area were examined, but police made no progress in identifying the person who became known as the Oconto County Doe. In a twist to the gruesome tale, in September 2022, details of the case were entered into NamUs as case UP95145. NamUs is the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System used in the US to help identify missing and unclaimed bodies. It allows investigators to match DNA and other identifying factors to family members to try and resolve cases and bring closure to their loved ones. In 2023, the Oconto County Sheriff's Office and the Brown County Medical Examiner's Office took up the case in the hope of identifying the unknown individual through advanced forensic DNA testing and genetic genealogy. It was during this process that it was determined the skull belonged to a male and not a female, a revelation that with the passage of time may make the identification of the skull almost impossible. Anyone with information that could aid in this investigation is encouraged to contact the Oconto County Sheriff's Office and reference agency case number 0122-3101 or NamUs ID UP95145. Pag Pag It's hard to believe in the modern world we live in that humans still scavenge for food in bins and dump sites. But the sad reality is that they do, and the term used for using discarded food is pagpag. -pag. The word originates from the Filipino language, Tagalog, and literally means to shake off the dust or dirt. Pagpag -pag can be anything from leftovers discarded by restaurants to expired frozen meat, fish, or vegetables discarded by supermarkets. It can be eaten immediately after being found, or can be cooked in a variety of ways. Due to extreme poverty in the Philippines, the act of recovering, cooking and eating pagpag -pag has even turned into a profitable business for some, who scavenge the food, clean it, and turn it into a meal to sell to other impoverished people. The health risks associated with consuming dumped food are widespread and include ingestion of poisons, toxins, and foodborne illnesses, as well as diseases such as hepatitis A, typhoid, and cholera, Several news channels have done reports of the practice to try and highlight the extremes people will go in order to survive hunger. In 2018, BBC News published a three minute long mini documentary showing how Pag Pag is made. Take a look at a few clips and watch the full thing in the description below. <laughs> Tinatanggal ko yung mga buto mukha nito. Yan, ganyan. Ay ko, eh, ganyan daw po talaga. Eh, nang kaya. Pag puro pagpag eh. Hanggat nandito po po kami, kakain na pa rin pa yung papag. Animals and Landfills It's staggering to think that a third of all the food produced globally will end up in a landfill. However, the food humans deem as unfit to eat is readily accepted by wildlife, often to the detriment of their health and hunter instinct. We'll look at just a few of the thousands of animals affected by the food we throw out that has become part of their diet. Perhaps the most obvious landfill scavengers are birds. Many species of bird now use landfill waste as their food source instead of hunting their normal prey and the new generation of birds rely on landfills for their food source, something that has altered their natural behaviour patterns. A study in March 2023 found that white storks in Europe, which have always migrated to Africa for the winter, have started staying in European countries such as Spain and Portugal all year round, because they have become addicted to the junk food that they eat at landfills. Even birds of prey the most majestic of hunters have been lured to the easy picking of landfills, and some of them have become landfill specialists. 
What is worrying is no one is sure what the long-term health implications might have on birds who only feed from landfills, as dump diving could lead to accidental ingestion of all sorts of toxins and other hazardous material. Something else that has been noticed is that birds that nest near the dumps show markedly higher fledgling rates, and the population of some birds has exploded over recent years. But it's not only birds that use landfill as a dinner table, other animals are relying on discarded food. A resurgence of brown bears and wolves in modern Europe is said to be a direct result of landfill feeding, and it's also the main reason leopards have been able to adapt to living in and around major cities in India, where they prey on other animals that scavenge garbage, such as dogs, pigs, goats and rats. Humans have disrupted the natural instinct and selection process of wildlife, something that is not easy to remedy, as Yellowstone National Park found out back in the 1970s. They closed dumps in the park to end the artificial feeding of the grizzly bears that lived there. However, cut off from their food source, the grizzlies struggled and their numbers diminished. It took several years for them to adapt to a more natural diet and to flourish again. A similar problem occurred on the Spanish island of Mallorca after they closed the only dump on the island and cut off the food source for many birds and other creatures. It was discovered that many of them were low quality individuals that had lung problems and other diseases who without the landfill food wouldn't have survived in the wild as natural selection would have weeded them out. For these weak birds and other wildlife, going back to natural resources will mean certain death as competition for food will be fierce and only the strongest will survive. War Heroes This is a disturbing one. When American soldiers are killed whilst on duty, the armed services have a special obligation to care for them and their families. All troops killed overseas return to Dover Air Force Base, Delaware, in flag-draped transfer cases and are honoured in what the military calls a dignified transfer ceremony. However, in 2011, after whistleblowers spoke out, an investigation revealed that not all soldiers were treated with the dignity and respect they deserved. After it was discovered that some of the nation's war dead were disposed of in the most horrific ways, they were dumped in a Virginia landfill. The investigation uncovered that on two occasions, body parts were lost completely, and between 2003 and 2008, the partial remains of at least 274 troops, repatriated from Iraq and Afghanistan, ended up in the landfill. These were the remains of soldiers that their family members had entrusted to the military to dispose of in a decent and respectful way. They were completely unaware of the truth about where their loved ones ended up. After the practice was exposed, Air Force officials acknowledged that it was the procedure for fragments or portions of body parts that were initially unidentifiable or were recovered from the battlefield. Thankfully, the policy was abandoned in 2008 and all partial remains are now buried at sea. However, it was also discovered that partial remains from some people killed in the September 11th attacks in 2001 ended up in a landfill. The unidentified remains came from two of the three sites of the September 11th attacks, the Pentagon and the Shanksville, Pennsylvania crash site. The remains were classified as ones which could not be tested or identified, leaving open the possibility that they could have come from victims and hijackers. The report suggested that the remains were treated like medical waste and should have been cremated. However, officials later learned some residual matter was left behind that was dumped in a landfill. So that's it for this video. There were five disturbing real life horror stories involving landfills. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon for another video.